Hi, I'm going to go over some history with you of atomic structure. There are so many amazing great people that have contributed to chemistry. This is just a focus on atomic structure, so really how we discovered the subatomic particles. Um, so give you a lot of grace, there are wonderful, wonderful people that aren't included on the board, but this will give you at least a really good start on history for atomic structure. Okay, first person I want to begin with, all the way back, all the way back um, to Greece, Democritus. Uh, he's the person that we give credit with really having the first idea um, of coming up with the idea of small indivisible particles. Um, he coined the term atomus, and so um, honoring him, we named our small particles atoms after Democritus. Now, he was a philosopher. Um, he didn't use scientific experimentation to prove that. Uh, scientific uh, experimentation didn't come until John Dalton. This is between 1803 and 1807. Uh, kind of cool. He was a school teacher in England, and he came up with the atomic theory. I think that's pretty neat. In the atomic theory, he gave four postulates. The first one, he said, each element is composed of its own unique atoms. Um, next, he said, all atoms of a given element are the same. Oh, he was so close. He didn't know about subatomic particles. This is not 100% true because we have isotopes. We can have the same atom, or the same element, excuse me, but with a different mass number, a different number of neutrons. So isotopes, it made this postulate not 100% correct. Next he said atoms cannot be changed by, um, oh, he said that atoms cannot be changed, period. I wanted to add, if he had said by chemical reaction, uh, by chemical or physical means, he would have been correct. Um, he didn't know about nuclear chemistry. We can change atoms with nuclear chemistry. We cannot change atoms by any chemical or physical means. So when he said atoms cannot be changed right there, wasn't totally correct because um, it needs to be qualified. They can't be changed by chemical or physical means. This last one, 100% there. So elements combine to form compounds. So um, this first and fourth postulate, spot on. The two middle ones, man, he was close. He just didn't have enough information. Next, Dmitry Mendeleev, um, our Russian, 1869. Um, amazing how he put together the periodic table. Um, it was in dispute. Uh, look up a video on Dmitry Mendeleev. Pretty neat, he was alive uh, when the science community finally said, oh, you organized it correctly. Um, so, so neat how it's organized. Came from Mendeleev. Um, now, J.J. Thompson, 1897, this is the first discovery of a subatomic particle. He was using the cathode ray tube and discovered the electron. So, I'm so sorry, bear with my terrible drawing. There we go. You can tell why I'm not an art teacher. Um, he shot a ray through this tube, and what he discovered is that he could bend the ray with magnets. Um, so, if you put, let's say, a positive magnet right here, this ray would attract to it. Um, if there was a negative magnet, it would deflect. So what he deduced from this is that there must be a particle inside the atom that has a negative charge. So that was the key, is that he saw that this would have a negative charge, and that was the electron. Now moving on, this was in 1909, so what, 12 years later, John Milliken did the oil drop experiment, and he determined the mass to charge ratio of an electron. So let me say that again. The mass of the electron compared to the charge, the mass to charge ratio of the electron. Now here's the amazing thing. I mean, think back to 1909, people still had carts drawn by horses. Cars were even mainstream. I mean, barely coming um, into society. Um, he discovered the mass to charge ratio. We know the mass to charge ratio of an electron using mass spec. Awesome instrumentation is what I used when I was, a, when I was an organic chemist. Um, he was, get this, 99% correct, 99% accurate in 1909. So cool. Um, as I understand the experiment, he had this container, and in the middle, there was a charged plate, and he would do oil drops down this. And based on the current that was going through that, um, and the rate at which the oil went through the hole, he was able to come up with the mass to charge ratio. Wow way above my pay grade. Brilliant, brilliant in 1909, so cool. Okay, a year later, wow, we're on a roll. Ernest Rutherford in 1910 discovered the nucleus. Uh, he was doing the gold foil experiment. Now, if a professor is going to ask you a question, a teacher's going to ask you a question about history, 
for some reason, the gold foil experiment, experiment, it's the favorite one. So let me draw this out for you. Um, what Rutherford did was he put a thin piece of gold foil, just like tin foil, except gold. If you have any, I will take your gold foil. Um, and then he shot alpha rays through it. Now behind this uh, was a zinc, sorry, that's a Z, a zinc sulfide sheet. So as the alpha particles would um, hit this gold foil, what he discovered is that the great majority of those alpha particles just went right through the foil and they would hit the back of this zinc sulfide. It would flash kind of a green color. Um, this is exactly what he discovered. For every 8,000 particles of alpha particles that he shot through the gold foil, 7,999 hit the back of that zinc sulfide. One out of every 8,000 bounced back. It's almost like pool balls. If you're playing billiards and the cue ball hits the eight ball, they hit and they bounce back. That's what happened once out of every 8,000 particles. So from that, uh, Rutherford deduced two things. Number one, there must be a dense center inside of the nucleus. And number two, the majority of the volume of the nucleus is empty space. Uh, now, just a year later, um, using alpha particles with nitrogen, Rutherford discovered the proton. So two great discoveries. Wow, back to back, that's amazing. Uh, now, in 1913, Niels Bohr, he got the um, Nobel Prize for this. He discovered the planetary model and was looking at the emission spectra of hydrogen. Um, now, any model that we write is going to have issues. Any model will have issues because it's not the real thing. It's not the real substance. This is what Niels Bohr came up with. We've got the nucleus in the center, and then we have electrons that orbit the nucleus. Now, two very obvious uh, limitations with this model. Number one is two-dimensional and atoms are three-dimensional. Second thing, electrons do not circle the nucleus like Earth orbits the sun. Now, are those electrons in an energy level? Yes, but they can be anywhere in that energy level and they don't necessarily go in this orbital circular pattern. For what we do, especially in a first year chemistry class, this model helps us explain and describe the phenomenon that we observe from the elements and, the, and, um, and their behaviors, their interactions. So it does a great job helping us, but just keep in mind, there's definitely limitations. Okay, also in 1913, Henry Mosley, he was actually working in Ernest Rutherford's lab. He was doing, um, oh, I can't remember, so sorry, I can't remember what his experimentation was, but he uh, discovered that the number of protons identifies the element. In essence, he discovered the atomic number, um, that the, uh, it's lined up on the periodic table, one through 118, and that the number of protons define the element. Lastly, talking about the atomic structure, some atomic particles, look at this date, James Chadwick, 1932. 35 years after the first subatomic particle, 35 years after the electron was discovered, finally the neutron was discovered. And I always ask my students, why did it take so long? And I always have at least one student in every class raise their hand and they'll say, because it was neutral. It was difficult for us to see, um, if, if I can use that word. It was difficult for us to detect. Uh, he was doing experimentation with the radiation off of beryllium, and that's how he discovered the neutron kind of a fun thing. If you need to memorize these, um, my my children, when they were little, we had that movie, Jimmy Neutron. I remember him doing that chicken dance, that movie. Um, well, Jimmy Neutron, notice his name is James. The nickname for James is Jimmy. So you can think James Chadwick, Jimmy Neutron, he discovered the neutron, <laughs> if you have to memorize it. Okay, history, rich, fun, interesting. Have a good day.